Hey, so, I want I want to talk about uh, your brother Pat, um, Uncle Pat, doc- PhD, Doctor Pat, and he obviously. You mean my personal psychologist? Your personal psychologist, the one be- just beneath, be- uh, below you. Yes. Uh, in in order. Yes. Um, you used just like you used to uh, rent me. Oh, we talked about that, but um, I wanted the, the the whole he can't. Uh, you make him lay down. Well, he, it's not quite the way he tells it. It sounds bad, but from my view, well, like, it seems to me uh, that if you have your younger brother, you should treat him with love. I did, but what I didn't want to do. Uh-huh. Like if somebody knows how kind you are, like I am, right? They'll misuse you. <laughs> so I didn't want them to know how kind I was. Right. So like when I got a job and I made some money, rather than walk in and hand it to them, uh-huh. I would tell them, "You guys agree to be my slave for the summer, and I'll give you X number <laughs> of dollars a week." Right, right. And they would agree to it. So, so like when I wanted water, uh, one of them would have to go get the glass, hold it to my lips while I drink, <laughs> and. And Pat, um, I would tell him, I'm watching television, so I would lay on the ground, and he would have to lay under my head and be my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so then I, and then I would, so I would be watching television, and while he was breathing, I'd say, Pat, you're breathing and making my head go up and down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you got to tell, tell a past story about um, your mom and her last days. Um. Well, let me tell a story before we get to that story. Uh-huh. Um, I can see why Pat is not as all there. Well, if, you, if he has to be a human pillow. Right. So some of it I could take credit for because I. Yeah. I take, just, on, take ownership of that. I could have walked in and handed the money. But I think the other part that maybe if I had to do all over again, I would do it a different way. Uh-huh. Uh, I sold Pat to my roommate. <laughs> my roommate had no brothers Right Only had sisters Right And I had five brothers Uh huh So I said to him I've got some extra brothers I'll sell you one <laughs> So Pat was sitting in the backseat of the car We were in college Uh huh And I said I'll sell you Pat <laughs> And Pat said no, Don't sell me I said Come on He needs a brother <laughs> So Bill said Okay I'll pay you And how much I said five bucks <laughs> So you rented your brother out for well, five dollars, no, I, I didn't rent him. I sold you sold him. him. <laughs> <laughs> it was even better. <laughs> All right, sold. I cut ties with him right there. <laughs> but look, I sold him to a good slave owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my, my roommate Bill Bell, he was funny. Yep. He needed a little brother. Right, right. So <laughs> it worked out. So maybe that was might have been part of this. Right. But my uh, brother Pat, to put it bl- bluntly, he killed my mother. <laughs> And Pat killed Granny. Yes, here's how he did it. You know, my mother used to come to visit, and she could just play Scrabble all day. Uh-huh. So we would play Scrabble, and then I would notice when she got tired, I would make up an excuse and say, Mom, I got to go do some work. So then she would just go to bed. Right, right. So um, after my father passed away, my brother Pat, uh-huh. knowing that I'm the family favorite, tried to move. With he's going to go to Cincinnati more often and spend time with mom. Be, right. Trying to work me out and work himself Try, trying in. Trying to yeah, move right. it, wedge himself in there right. to become number one. So I noticed that he started going to Cincinnati more often, and I said, P.A., Pat. Yeah. I said, P.A., you are not going to move in as favorite because <laughs> I've, I've sealed that off over yeah, all done. these years. Yeah, it's done. So you're wasting your time. All right. So he would go in and play my mom. I think there was a game called Canaster. Uh-huh. It was like one of those card games, like something like Rummy, I guess. Uh-huh. And so... The last Sunday of on this earth, he was playing my mom, and she was telling him that she said, I, "You know, I don't feel really good." So, but she she loved the play, so she's not gonna quit. Right. So Pat played her till she finally decided she had to go to bed. Right. And then the next morning, they take her to the hospital, and then she passes away. <laughs> and I said, "Pat, you killed mom." <laughs> saw her by the time you beating on her and she's laying on no, top of the table but she's tired and still trying can, to can barely hold her cars up <laughs> and and you still kept beating on her you killed her because you knew she wasn't going to quit right and 
And like I used to like look at her when I would see that she was getting tired, I would make up an excuse because she doesn't know how to quit. She just right. wants to keep playing. Right, right. I said, so you actually killed our mother. <laughs> and he has acknowledged that he's responsible. He's responsible. Man. But that's the good part of him, because you know he's a psychiatrist. Uh -huh. Psychologist, right? Yeah. So he knows how to face things. Right, right, right. He doesn't so, yeah, he, he doesn't so run if, from us. So if Pat ever sees this, uh-huh. He knows that he killed our mother. <laughs> and he's got to own it. Yes. Uh, well, he owns it because I told him enough times. <laughs> and then he tries to sneak in and take one of the little girls that was living with mom uh -huh. and try to be her favorite uncle. Uh huh. I had already sealed that up. I, I had sent the little girl a sock full of pennies. Uh huh. And I told her, send me a letter saying that I'm your favorite uncle <laughs> and I will be your favorite uncle forever and you can have all these pennies. Right. But if you don't sign the letter. Right. So you you, then, sent, you actually sent this little girl a contract. Yes. That To, to be right. your favorite uncle. And acceptance <laughs> and offerings and all those other things that make a contract was there. <laughs> and she signed it and sent it back to me. Right. So it's a binding contract. Yeah. With, how old is she? Eight. <laughs> Eight. So what happens, um, I get a call from Pat, uh -huh. and Pat says, uh, Daryl, uh, I think I'm Mason's favorite uncle. I said, no, no. you're not. He I said, contract. Come he on. said, yes, she is. I said, I have a contract right. on her. <laughs> so I immediately have to send her a note that you are violating your contract, <laughs> and if you decide that Pat is your favorite uncle, you put all those pennies back in that sock and send it back to me. <laughs> so I, I don't know what the outcome of that was. But, I mean, you just can't trust your nieces either. Right, right, right. Uh, there, there's a story when I was younger that you told, could be one of the funniest stories ever. And it involved, you, 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 you've talked about the funeral home that was next to you. You used to help bring dead bodies in and everything. Yeah. And you had a, you had a, a, a friend Oh, that, you met my friend Chapman? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know that funeral home that was right next door to our house? Uh-huh. And we had these big shotgun houses. So in the back was an alley. Uh-huh. And the funeral director had his embalming room in the back. Right. And it was dark back there. Uh-huh. So my friend Chapman, who lived right across from the funeral home, because my house was right next to the funeral home. Right. He lived right across the street from, from the, the funeral, funeral home. Okay. He would not cross the street in front of the funeral home. He would go up one house he was that, and cross over to mine because he just didn't want to walk past that funeral he home. He was that scared of it, huh? So wow. one day my older brother and I, and this is probably a low chapter in our life, <laughs> but my older brother and I, it was like night. Uh -huh. We took Chapman and tied him up, uh -huh. tied his feet behind him, his hands together, and my older brother and I carried him and laid him up against the embalming room door. <laughs> like he would walk around the house, and now he's right there he's right in there the middle of it. Against the embalming door. And so my older brother and I, and we tied him up good. Oh, are you thinking right. that? Or? Well, we did. We you, knew he tied him up. He was like hog tied. He was hog tied, just like a cow. <laughs> right. When they, when they hog tied a cow. So my older brother and I, we, we dragged him up. He was trying to squeal, right. but he couldn't get it loose. Right. And we laid him right up against. The embalming door. Oh man! And then, Freaking up. And then my brother and I took off running to the front of the house. Right. When we get to the front of the house, he's running like right, right along beside us. That, you know that superhuman strength that they talk about when, when a car falls on the, the kids and, uh, and a woman comes and picks the car and that kind of thing. Oh man! So I have actually seen it. There is no way that he could have gotten out of those ropes and gotten up and been, and been, been running right beside us. Oh, my stomach hurts. I mean, he was right beside us when we got to the front of the funeral home. Were you, were you running slow? No, I mean, we were sprinting. Oh, my God, you're going to make me wreck Man, this car. We, we were sprinting. And, and he got to the front of the funeral home just the Oh, with us. man, right? that is crazy. Yeah, so... Uh, now, so, that was my brother, my older brother's influence on me, father. Oh, okay, you'll blame Malcolm. Yeah. So uh, we've always we have some we have endless Chris stories, and I'm I gotta keep telling them. Um, you you had 